This week's episode of Motorhead Garage is on the level as this Silverado gets an active suspension. And we'll show you a big rig cabin heater that will keep you warm and reduce engine idle time. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage, folks. Well, we are here down in our big rig garage here at the Boiler Commerce Park. And if you're hearing some noise in the background, what you're really hearing are all those exhaust systems being made. So don't pay too much of attention to it. But if you've got a big rig like this, one of the problems you run into in the wintertime especially is trying to get some heat there in that cabin. Well, we got a solution for that. We got Bob Gardner here from Webesto, and Bob's brought us a really unique product that we're installing on this rig right now. Now, Bob, tell me a little bit about your cabin heater. Sure, Dave. Well, yeah, what we have here is our Webasto Airtop 2000 ST. This is an auxiliary heater that provides heat for the cab and the sleeper bunk for when the truck is not driving. So although it's a heater, it's actually used for idle reduction, so you don't have to run the main engine uh, when you're in a non-driving condition. Well, that can get real expensive, though, these guys sitting there idling all night. Absolutely. I mean, how much fuel does this thing use? Yeah, well, you know, when you idle your engine for heat at night, it can be around a gallon an hour. Out of one gallon, we can get 22 hours or more of heat from this product. Wow, that's a big deal, especially when you got diesel fuel running $4 or more a gallon. Absolutely. That can be a big deal on that. Absolutely. So, so, what else? so what we have here is we have our heater, we have fuel pump, fuel line, electrical harnesses, exhaust, air ducting, etc., and we have our new uh, smart temp control. Uh, this is a digital thermostat, if you will, uh -huh. where you can have an absolute precision, custom engineered uh, temperature setting for the driver to stay comfortable all night, no matter what the temperature is. So just is like outside. in your house, you can set your thermostat at 68 or 72 or 85 degrees, whatever you want it in there, right? Absolutely. And it will help regulate this kicking off and on and make it work, right? Absolutely. That's exactly what it does. All right. Well, Sam and Jim are down here installing the solenoid-powered fuel pump. Let's check it out. That's good and tight. Uh, what Jim and I are doing here is, first thing we did was we put a T in the tank, run the line down in the tank, because this heater is going to feed off of the diesel tank. Trucks got tanks on both sides. And we come up here, and now what we've got is a line with a filter, and that's going to run over here to our pre-installed pump. So I'll go ahead and let you put this on here, buddy. All right. Those lines fit really, really tight. I want to push them in until the two pieces bottom together, tighten the clamps. The clamps have torque limiters on them, so you give them the right tension. We have our electric fuel pump free mounted, and we have another line gonna go right on here. There's a little fuel damper, and it's gonna go up to the floor of our compartment, and that's where we'll mount the heater. And then we've got a wire harness, and we're gonna ride, tie right into the batteries. What do you think, you got that ready? I've got it ready. Okay, so what we need to do now is run our wire. Correct. All right, this is the fuel line. It's gonna run up inside, and it's, this is just gonna be outside because when the unit is setting on it, the fuel nipple will be sticking down through. So Jim, tell me about this wire harness. Well, this is our main harness for the heater itself. We're gonna have our normal connection to the heater. Mm -hmm. We've got this wire here that's gonna run over to the batteries for our positive and negative fuse connection. Right. And then we've got our connector here, which is gonna run up to our controller inside the cab, and it's gonna be similar to a thermostat in your home. Great, so what we need to do is, we need to tie these wires. We've run a wire that goes down through, all the way across to the batteries on the other side, Tie them up there with a the fuse. We'll let Dave do uh, some of the other stuff in here. So let's go put some wires on. Sounds good. Okay, well, let me show you what I've been up to. What I did is I've gone through, gone into the cabin underneath the bench back there, and I put a hole right in here. I've got to drill a hole for some duct work. Before I do that, though, let me show you what we have here. This is our heater, and this is going to go right in here. Now, Sam is and Jim have already drilled these holes out, and what they use is this gasket right here is a template. And this gasket is important, you wanna keep that on there because that'll seal this from right here to uh, keep from fumes from coming up inside the cabin at all times. But this will mount just like so, right in through here. This will go down underneath, hook up to our fuel pump. But you can see how it's gonna go. Before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and drill this hole for our duct work. Now here's what we're talking about. This is the outlet that's going to be on the inside 
of the cabin in there. Just let the air out. But what we'll do is we'll drill that hole through the wall, mount this, and then of course this is the tubing that's going to go on there. So we'll have air coming out, or the heated air coming out into the cabin, and we'll also have a return in here. Before I get any farther, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to drill this out. In the meantime, we're going to take a short break. We've got a lot more coming, so stay with us. Hey, welcome back, folks. Well, we've been busy installing things here. We've got the hot air duct installed now. But Jim and Sam are now working on the controller, yes. the thing that controls this thing. And Bob, you've got an example of it right here. Can you show folks how this actually is going to work? Sure, yeah, this is a demo. This is our smart temp control. Basically, it's a controller where the operator can simply just dial uh, here, press a button to turn it on. When it's in a heat mode, lights turn red. Um, if during the time he wants to adjust the temperature to a different setting, turning it to the right is up, turning the low is down, he simply sets his new temperature, presses the button, and that sets the temperature comfort where he wants. It also shows what the current temperature is so he can get an idea of where it is now and where it's going to be heated to. Good. So it's just like thermostat in your house. Absolutely. Very intuitive, very easy to use. Spent my entire life cleaning up after Dave. Here's a good time to stop all the holes are drilled, get all the shavings up. That way you don't get them in your shoes and on your clothes. Track them into the guy's bunk. Now Jim and I are running this wire up. We've made a hole here through the bulkhead. We'll pull that up there, Jim. And this is going to be for the temperature control, which is going to operate the heater and does a great job. All right, we're just about where we need to be, buddy. Okay. Now, I'm going to close this up a little bit so I don't whack my head on it. I've taken the panel out. It sits inside the truck, and there's all kinds of power outlets. There's an ashtray. This is in the sleeper. And I've marked it already. You take the uh, controller out of the package, pop that open. This is a great template. We need a hole that size in this panel, and then we'll mount our control right on there with a couple of screws that are supplied. I'm just going to use a unibit, and of course, it's nice to have a piece of wood here to drill through. You want to take your time because I don't want to tear up this guy's wood grain. Okay, now we have our controller all mounted. So we come right through the back with our harness. Have Jim install us. Here you go, Jim. Okay, that's gonna work. Okay, folks, well, you can see what everybody has done here. We have the uh, heater installed, really a nice insulation. Got our uh, hose back here for our hot air going in. The last thing I got to do is put this little grill right here on the front. Now, that's important to do because, believe it or not, things can get in there, so you want to keep that clean. So we'll pop this on like so. There we go. And now we're all set. We want to thank Bob and uh, Jim for stopping by from Webasto, and Sam's done a great job on this thing. Takes a little while to install these. Usually professionals do it. It's going to mean a lot. We've run out of time. We'll see you again next time here at Motorhead Garage.